Today on Call for Two, a quick before you buy it review for Stranger Things Upside Down. I'm Jesse, I'm here with Greg. Thanks for having me on channel. Before we get started, let's go down to the table and see how this game plays. In Stranger Things Upside Down, players will win if they complete all three Rescue Will objectives. They will rescue Will and win the game. Players will lose the game if any player at any time their fear track reaches the end or if you go through the action deck three times, you will run out of time and lose the game. On a player's turn, you will first take a move action. You can move, you can play cards, which will allow you to move further. When you're done moving, you can take the action in whatever space you end up in. If you end up in a space with an enemy, such as the Demogorgon, you must fight the enemy. Actions include calming down, which is to lower your fear, fear track. You can get items from the item deck, which will help you in your quest by adding uh, you know, pluses to your calm down or to fight or various other effects. You can uh, request Eleven's help, who is not a playable character, but she has some very powerful one-time effects in the game. You can... Uh, Remove, investigate the lab, which will allow you to play cards without penalty with the uh, hazard symbol, which I'll get to in a moment. You can fight the Demogorgon as well. Uh, all of the um, tests or you know skill checks in this game revolve around the concept of you will play a number of cards from your hand, count up how many, uh, how much, whatever value you have. And uh, then you will look at whatever test you were trying. So if you're trying this test here, this will say five. So if you had played these six, you would win. If you had only played four and you had the two and the, four, and the three, you would have failed the test, but you will randomly remove one of these tokens. And now you will know that this test will be a lot easier. The amount of cards that you spend, you will draw up at the end of your turn which is sort of accelerating your clock. So you can spend a lot of cards and guarantee success. However, you're shortening the game and you're making the game a little more difficult for yourself. You also have these allies here that you can recruit uh, using the tests, um, the same sort of test, and uh, they will provide you ongoing effects throughout the game. At the end of your turn, you will draw up your cards and you will draw the number of cards um, from the event deck, and uh, that depends on how far along you are on the act here and how many hazard cards you've drawn. They'll do things like move the Demogorgon to attack you, um, move the patrols around um, to make you lose cards and various other effects based upon the events of Season 1 of Stranger Things. Players will continue uh, playing until either you uh, win or lose the game. So this is a very, very thematic game, and it's brought to life very well with its components. There's some very fantastic miniatures. Um, I painted mine here for, as a gift to my nieces, um, but yours will be non-painted. Um, but the miniatures look really, really great, and they take paint very well. Uh, it has a very nice board here, which has the upside down, Hawkins. The opposite side has um, Season 2's map. The It comes with a deck of allies and... Um, event cards for season one and allies and event cards for season two different villains you have the demogorgon for the first season and demodogs for the second season um, and the first season also has these uh, vans that kind of go around and try to pick you up the, the two scenarios are very similar there are some differences which make uh, you know which make them actually feel very very thematic the ally cards and the powers and things everything about the game really oozes the theme of that show if you're a fan of the show the rules are not simple for this game. This is not a game designed for complete non-gamers. It's not a gateway game. There are some complications here. And it's going to take some time, if you're a new gamer, to wrap your head around the decisions and the turn structure. I would say the actual decisions on a turn-by-turn -turn basis, the tactical decisions, are fairly limited and not very interesting. Uh, you're not, you don't have multi-use cards, you're not really making, you're basically confronting a test and then deciding what's a reasonable amount to push your luck. So on a turn-by-turn -turn basis, I would say the decisions aren't that interesting. 
there are some more interesting decisions in terms of a higher level of what, what goal do we pursue first? How should we split up and balance our actions? And we've talked about in our longer review, it does feel to us like there are some right ways to play the game and win. And once you figure those out, you've lost a lot of the mystery and interest in the game. But that window where you're figuring out what higher level strategies and goals to go for is interesting. Mm -hmm. And depending on your skill level, you may spend more time in that window than otherwise. So I think that this system that Jesse kind of talked about here a little bit is very, very cool for gamers. Uh, I would love to see this can maybe changed up a little bit. It's a little fiddly, but I love the concept of doing a test. And if you fail, you remove one of the tokens, making it a little easier next time. Um, but it adds this kind of cool uh, push your luck element, but also it's better than kind of just rolling dice and failing or succeeding. I think that's a very cool system. Mm -hmm. um, in general, the replayability of the game uh, seems like, you know, this game lands heavier on the theme side where you're going to kind of go through that season of season one or season two of the show. Um, but it sacrifices a bit of, uh, being able to take different approaches. I feel like there's pretty one pretty good strategy to do and that's kind of it. So for me, like it's enjoyable to play through and it's evocative of that show. However, I don't see that this is a game that you'd really be able to play multiple times, you know, that you're going to play a lot, you know, and, and try different strategies. I agree with you. And one of the things that makes it less replayable is the character powers do not change the way you play the game. They don't really add that much to it. So you're not like, let's try it again with this character and it'll play completely differently. I think the other thing is we talk about sometimes length of the game versus sort of randomness. And here it feels like it may, it doesn't really overstay its welcome, mm -hmm. but there are some ways this game can instantly end. And because the game goes on long enough, you're really incentivized not to push your luck too much. Although I agree with you that the push your luck elements here are different and interesting. So in general, I think that this is a weird mismatch because I think a lot of the people that are going to be drawn to this game um, are going to be non-gamers or maybe like light gamers. And I think that there's enough weird unintuitive rules and some different concepts that they may find this kind of game to be quite difficult. I think that for gamers, there's some interesting things going on in here that you don't normally see in other games. However, uh, it really sacrifices a lot of that gameplay for the thematic. So I think this is a wonderfully thematic game. And I think that if you play through it a couple of times, that's going to be very enjoyable for you if you're a big fan of the show. However, I think after a few plays of each side, probably not going to want to revisit this one if you're an avid gamer. Yeah, I think you said it well. It's a little hard to know who to recommend this to because it's a little bit mm -hmm. of a mismatch. If you're not a real gamer, you may struggle with it. Mm -hmm. And if you are a real gamer, you may solve this puzzle too mm -hmm. quickly. But there is going to be a window there, a small window. Mm -hmm. But if you're in that window where it takes you time to mm -hmm. figure out how to solve the overarching puzzles of what to do when, then you could have a good time here. Well, we have a very long discussion about this on the channel as well, if you'd like to check that out. Um, but otherwise, we'll see you on the next video.